Hello there, everybody, and welcome to Things We Said Today, our weekly podcast slash internet radio show in which we take a look at all things related to the Beatles, both in their their history and what's happening today and what will be happening uh, in, in the future, some including the very near future. Uh, first, though, I'm, uh, I'm Al Sussman from Beatle Fan Magazine, and I'm here with my three co-hosts. First of all, the uh, the host of the syndicated uh, radio Beatles radio show, Every Little Thing, Ken Michaels. Hi, Ken. Hi, Al. How's everyone doing? Good, Ken. And up in uh, scenic Portland, Maine, our uh, our resident musicologist, a uh, longtime contributor to Beatle Fan Magazine, longtime classical music uh, composer. Com- well, not well. Maybe you are a composer. I don't know if you have you ever written anything, Alan. I have been known to do that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Com- composer and writer, Alan Cozen. Hey, Al. How you doing? And hello, everyone. Yeah. Good. And last but certainly not least, out in uh, the, the Bay Area, uh, the, the reporter for Beatles Examiner and various other examiner.com columns, Steve Marinucci. Hey, Steve. Hey, Al. Hello, everyone. And as I mentioned, we, uh, we'll, we're going to be taking a look uh, today at something that will be happening in the very near future. And that's, uh, well, when this, uh, when this uh, show debuts, it'll be almost exactly two weeks before the, uh, the start of the, the, the next Fest for Beatles fans in the New York metro area. And with us, we have the man who uh, began all of this, uh, low those many years ago. Uh, math has never been my, uh, my forte, so I think it's 42 years, and that would be Mark Lapidus. Good evening, Al. How are you? Good evening, Mark. How you doing? Good. Hello, Alan. Hello, Ken. And hello, Steve. Hey, Mark. Hey, hello. Mark. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. Good to be you're, here. You're most welcome. It's our our pleasure. It's certainly a thrill. So. It's certainly <laughs> a thrill. <laughs> and a splendid time is guaranteed for all. But a boom. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Why don't you give us uh, give us a rundown of uh, what the uh, of what the plans are for this next uh, New York area Fest for Beatles fans? Well, it's only as you said two weeks away, and I'm saying, oh my gosh, do I have yeah. a lot of stuff to still do? Uh, Michelle came out today helping. Carol's finishing up the design, and it's just a lot of stuff to get ready. Multiples of of, of details. So we have a, a really great. I think it's a, I think it's a, our second best lineup of guests. The best one was the New York City show in, in uh, fourteen. We have four British Invasion legends, five people, but four artists. We mm-hmm. have Peter, Peter Asher, of course, from Peter and Gordon. He's a, he's he's always a wonderful guest. He's got great stories, and he's trying. He has his memoir shows that have been very successful, and he's doing a new one with Chad and Jeremy. And as he said in a little promo that he did for us, he said that he wants to do this once and for all to prove beyond a doubt that they were really two <laughs> separate groups. <laughs> <laughs> and Chad and Jeremy. So, so that, they're going to do a, a, a show together, two, a two-part memoir show, sat, Saturday part one and Sunday part two. Uh, the weekend of April 15th, folks, that's only two weeks away. And uh, we have Billy J. Kramer coming back. Uh, he'll he'll be doing some new songs with his band, including Liberty DeVito on drums. Mm-hmm. And that's Saturday, he'll be there the whole weekend. He's also world premiering his new book, his autobiography, called "Do You Want to Know a Secret?" I had a chance to look at it a little bit, but not too much because I got to get ready for the show. Sure. Uh, but mm-hmm. he's got a a really great memory. He's become a good friend over the last couple of years, and he just he just tells it like it is. He's really uh, he has a a good way of telling a story, and I'm I'm looking forward to reading the rest of it. Absolutely, we we had him on here a couple of weeks ago, and he right. and 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 uh, I've I have the book, and uh, and I can vouch for what you just said, Mark. It's, it oh, it is very much it is very much a uh, uh, a very straightforward book. He tells there's a lot of information in the book. Well, will be the book will be available for the first time anywhere on the planet at the fest, 
and he'll be signing copies. So if you come, make sure you pick up a copy because it's one of those rare books. He was there. Yeah, how many people were actually there in Liverpool at that time writing books? Mm-hmm. And it right. has some great it has some great pictures in it too. Yes, it did. It does. <laughs> <laughs> I had a I wallow down my dinner very quickly before this. Um, oh, that's okay. Me too. <laughs> so we also have uh, at the end of his set on Saturday, he's going to bring on our other musical British Invasion legend, Mike Pender, this a founding member of the Searchers, and they had lots of hits. And I know you guys. I figured this out, and they, I hadn't mentioned it, but. Those four British Invasion artists had, I didn't count them out totally, they had about 30 top 40 hits in this country as, as, uh-huh. as those groups. That sounded mm-hmm. not right to me. And that's a lot. Mm-hmm. That is, yeah, that is, that is a lot. Yeah, so they're going to be there. And then uh, at night, so Mike is going to do some Beatles songs with Billy at the end of his day afternoon set. At night, mm-hmm. his hits with Liverpool. So that's gonna he'll be on twice, and those that's gonna that's a lot of live music, and uh, we're excited about and, it. And that just actually that just scratches the surface because there's gonna be a lot of other live music besides those headliners. Yes, and those co-headliners we have um, we have the Birds of Paradox. They've been with us the last three years, mm-hmm. and this guy Jeff Slade, terrific guy. He just told mm-hmm. me yesterday he's gonna be premiering his album, new CD that they have at the fest. He doesn't. I didn't give me the title yet. He, I guess they're still fig, figuring it out. But in his group will be Steve Holly from Wings, yes. Gary uh, Van Syok, and Adam Ippolito from John's Elephant's Memory Band, and Rana Prayer, who played horn on Whatever Gets You Through the Night, and John Cobert, who's never been to the fest before at all, will be playing keyboards. Uh, he'll do Stand By Me, and he did it with John on the uh, rock and roll album. So we have some artists. So we're going to do a we're going to do a, a unique thing that I came up with. I think early on su- on Saturday afternoon, it's called In the Studio with a Beatle or two. Mm-hmm. And besides the guys I just mentioned, Mark Rivera and Mark Hudson will be joining them. So it's going to be a really mm-hmm. one of those really wonderful sessions that uh, that seem to only happen at the fest. We bring a lot of these people. And mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to see, hearing that. And then right after that, then the Birds of Paradox go on. So all the same, a lot of the same musicians will be there. So more live music than ever before. Seems that that's what fans want. And my girls had came up with the idea of an Apple Jam stage a couple of years ago. And that's been a big hit. Uh, we have some groups returning. We have the School of Rock from Westchester. You know, local cellophane flowers who really got a standing ovation last year for... Four girl, uh, a string quartet and a uh, guitar playing Paul voice doing all the uh, songs that you'd think would need a string quartet, like Eleanor Rigby, Here Today, a thing called Yesterday. And mm-hmm. <laughs> so they're going to do a, a set. We're going to give them a set in the, in the uh, main ballroom because it really went over great last year. Mm. I was going to say, perhaps you should um, uh, explain to people who may not be all that all that much aware of who they are, what School of Rock is. Oh, okay. School of Rock is a national organization, and their goal is to get kids in various parts of the country, they were all over the country now, interested in music. So they set up a, a school. It's like, an, it's like going to play uh, soccer after school, but it's the School of Rock. And we almost had, last year would have happened, uh, but the people from Montclair couldn't make it up to New Jersey. We right. Switched hotels. Parents said, I'm not traveling up there. <laughs> so that yeah. didn't happen. But now it's a West Chester. We had them in, we had it in Chicago last summer. Mm-hmm. And it, it was terrific. It really was nice. Young, young fans, you know, passing the music on to the next generation is sort of our job, you know? Mm-hmm. So, so when you getting, say getting them interested in music, you mean in playing music, not just listening to music, right? Yes, yeah. I mean, they. I mean, they're all. They're probably all music lovers at that age. Mm-hmm. So it's like the parents say, "Hey, well, you want to, you know, play rock and roll, and then pick up an instrument, and that's where they get it." And mm-hmm. uh, my cousin's kids in Florida. No, the 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 twelve year old. He plays guitar, and we went to see him in Florida this winter. It was like an outdoor little club behind a little 
old rundown building, but that's what they set up as a little stage. And they do, there was a tribute to the drummer. The, what's his name? The current drummer that everybody knows. The, with the beard, long hair. Dave from Grohl. The Thank you. Yeah, it, was, it was a tribute to Dave Grohl. <laughs> <laughs> the name, it, it didn't stay in my brain. I know him, but I don't, uh, couldn't think of it. But mm. yeah, so they did songs from his current group, which is Alan. Foo Fighters? Yeah. Foo Fighters. <laughs> Sorry. Right. So there I just we played go. Alan for a moment there. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, these, these albums do not make my turntable too often or my CD mm. player. Mm. But he's very, he is very talented. And we know that he's a huge, huge Beatles fan. Oh, absolutely. Yes. So, and of course, having worked with Paul, too. Sure. Yes. So, he's on my list as future guest. <laughs> okay. Mm. At some that, point. Would be, that would be interesting. Yeah, that would it would be very interesting. It would be very, very interesting. Mm-hmm. It'd be nice to, you know, a young artist that young people know the current music and find out that he's such a big Beatles fan. So, other guests we have, uh, we haven't had Louise Harrison in, I think, 17 years. And she's written a book called My Kid Brother's Band, AKA The Beatles. Mm-hmm. And uh, again, I haven't. Read it. I just got it like three weeks ago. Believe it or not, we had her in Chicago, and I didn't. I never got a copy of the book, <laughs> but haven't read it yet. To be honest, I looked at it, skimmed through a little bit, and uh, but that, she had the longest lines in Chicago. I tell you that much. She sold out of the book, and she's you know, eighty-four years old. She's she's very uh, she's very sweet in her own way, and she's bringing her grandson Troy, who is a absolute ringer for her for his uncle george hmm. oh my oh so, my yes yeah, she just i haven't publicized it but he he's coming and i've never met him and i look forward to it. he talks like him she said he 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 looks like him his How manner old is, is he? 24 mm-hmm. no 25 oh my yeah so, so you've, come, you've seen photos of him you know what i haven't hmm. See, it's probably on facebook but i don't do facebook too much so mm-hmm that's interesting. Okay. Who else do we have? <laughs> Isn't that enough? We have a guy that nobody knows who he is. <laughs> Charlie Roberts. You only know him because you got my mailing and it says who he was. Right. He took a picture of the quarryman with John about a week or two before the, the day John met Paul. So like late June of 57. And he's made a poster out of it, limited edition. And he's coming over to talk about it. You know, he sounds like a sweet guy. I don't know how big a story it could be. Hi, I took this picture of my brownie when I was <laughs> five weeks old. <laughs> and it, it came out, and I didn't think anything of it. I totally forgot that I took it. And here I am, 57 years, 59 years later. Well, maybe he'll surprise you and say, and I also have these tapes. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> That would yeah, that would be the that would be the biggie right there. Mm-hmm. Right on his, on his portable cassette player. Yeah, his portable wall and sack. <laughs> so um, so he but you know he'll be an interesting person. Uh, Vivek, of course, Vivek Tiwari is going to talk. It's been announced in the last few weeks, as you know, that the Brian Epstein story is going to be a TV series, right? Which is very exciting because he he told me that it'll. It'll make it, they don't have to rush through the story to get it into an hour and a half. Mm. They can develop it and, and and put more into it. That's so, great. So he's very excited about that. And who else? We have Al Sussman. We have Ken Michaels. Hey, those are you guys. You're coming to the fest. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it says it right well, here. I'm reading this schedule, which will be made long. Schedule. Long. <laughs> schedule. <laughs> All the calls besides Mark, when are you mailing out the tickets? Oh, I mean, April 1st, like we told everybody originally? Yes, April 1st. When are you going to post the information? On next Friday, April 8th, it will be the day that you'll be able to see the entire schedule. Steve, I, did I mention Steve Holly? Nope. Yes, you did. Steve is, right. Steve is in uh, Jeff Slate's band, in yes. Birds of Paradox. Steve was also going to be helping out with Liverpool because uh, okay. Chris had a little accident over the winter. Ah, he's recovered, but um, he'll be there the whole time. But uh, whether he can drum for three or three and a half hours at a time, he doesn't think he will be. But mm-hmm. he'll, he'll drum the Liverpool set and maybe uh, 
Steve will come in and do the, you know, when all the guests come on and do the jam. Maybe the Friday night dance uh, Steve will work on. Mm-hmm. So they're working it out now. And, you know, as we get closer, they'll figure it out. But Liverpool will be there. These guys get better every year. It's just, it really is amazing to me. I mean, so many groups are out there, but these guys just are wonderful. So if you haven't been to the fest, how come? You're listening to this <laughs> wonderful radio podcast. Leave out the word radio. The word podcast, <laughs> internet, whatever it is we're doing, and you found us, you got to come to the fest. I'm sorry. It's it just, it's 42 years we're doing this. So you may have heard about the fest over the years, but I am the guy who went to John Lennon with the idea, told him all about it, told the whole story in 2014 on stage, which I really enjoyed doing. And John said, quote, I'm all for it. I'm a Beatles fan too. And here we are 42 years later. That's roughly uh, almost six, about six times longer than they were together as a band, mm-hmm. as we almost. Mm-hmm. And you know, I, I used to flat. It used to be amazed me that it was, it was twice as long, and then three times. This is uh, this is getting crazy, guys. Forty two years. <laughs> well, well, the if- fascination, the fascination, in the Beatles never ends. Never. For what ends. they did together, and then the continued success on their own. So. There's always so much out there to explore, and thankfully, as you have witnessed, Mark, so many new fans that you pick up through the years. A lot of teenagers that come to the fest, and uh, that's why the music keeps surviving, because it keeps on winning new audiences. Well, the kid, the kids find out about it through their parents and grandparents, and, that, and they say, hey, this stuff is so much better than what I'm listening to. Where'd that come from? <laughs> I've heard Beatles. Oh, this is their music? Wow. And I'm still, I'm still jealous of these young fans because they get to listen to, uh, uh, they can open up an album and listen to it, and it's brand new to them. Mm. Mm. We'll never have that again. So, mm. so Mark, one of the interesting things you have is, um, I think, it's who is playing um, all of Revolver? Because uh, it wasn't Liverpool, was it? Was it Liverpool? Yeah, yeah. Liverpool, Liverpool. Yeah. Have they done a full album like that before? For you? Yes, they have. They've done the White Album mm. complete. Uh, I believe they did Revolver maybe eight years ago. I know they did Pepper. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else did they I, do? Uh, one year when I was at the fest, they did all of Help. Yes, that was last year for the 50th anniversary, right. And then at the for You've Got to Hide Your Love Away, Mark Rivera came on and did that flute. It was just mm. special, very nice. It was wonderful. Okay. Yeah, Revolver, but they're bringing in a musician for Love You Too. Love, yeah, they're bringing a musician for that, which... We'll see on the uh, how it goes. It's mm-hmm. going to be exciting, and um, yeah. So side one on the, the, I told them to do the uh, the English version. <laughs> of course, <laughs> <laughs> well, mono or stereo. <laughs> if it was Rubber Soul, I would tell them to do the American version. Mm-hmm. Oh. But Rubber's but Revolver, we we got robbed. Yeah, we got we got robbed of ever thinking of that. It was the best album because. It's so ingrained the eleven tracks. Yeah. Without the other, you know, well, where's John? You know, how come Paul? How come George has more songs than John? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they are doing Revolver this year because Revolver is now getting so much sort of belated attention, and uh, you know, as some people feeling that it's the best of the albums, whereas uh, until now, pretty much everyone has thought it was Pepper. Well, we're doing it because it's the 50th anniversary. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that, that's yeah, it. That's and, you know, Robert, <laughs> Robert Rodriguez's book a couple of years back was really terrific. He that's made right, a good, yeah. good case out of it. He did. And, uh, but again, we didn't have that album. We had Revolver Minus Three. So we couldn't, you know, those, and those three songs weren't chopped liver. Unless we bought imports. And, well, we didn't, you know, in 66, we didn't buy imports. There weren't record stores that sold imports, except if you were in the city. Well. And Jersey kids didn't go to the city. To buy records. <laughs> yeah, right. Al, did you ever go to New York City to buy records in, as a teenager? Not as a teenager, no. But no, I, did, but did this part. you know, when I was in my twenties, sure. Right. Well, if they didn't have it at well, Sam Good or Corvettes or Alexanders, that was it. Or Hackensack exactly. Racing, right? <laughs> right. Well, I did, and it really was a trip. You know, you pick up a revolver out of an import bin, and you say, "What the hell." Right, but we didn't. You know. we didn't <laughs> up a, I was up in the Catskills. I bought it in Monticello, for God's sakes. Oh, <laughs> Monticello. I don't even think. I don't even think I got it the day it came out because I didn't even get the information about what day it came out hmm. up there. You don't get that kind of stuff when you have yeah. access. 
It's Maybe sad. It so, helps. Mark, do, do I take this to mean that that you personally, Mark, think that Revolver is their best album? No. Me personally? Yeah. It depends on what day of the week it is. You know, the, mm. if, if, I had a th- if I had to pick one album to take with me to a desert island, as the proverbial thing goes, I'd probably pick the White Album. Mm-hmm. 30 wow. songs, 29 songs. You know, I, I, I don't know. I would I would take the 2009 boxed set of <laughs> the <Yeah>. CD remasters. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's what no, I do. No, I don't know. I it's 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 really tough. It's a very tough question because you know, like Tom French Owen was trying to say, fans can pick their top ten Beatles songs, although it's difficult. But can you pick the bottom ten? Who can pick ten? Then there are they're all great songs. Mm-hmm. I mean, he said Wild Honey Pie. Okay, I'll give you that one. Leave out Revolution 9. <laughs> but That no, means a lot. That means that, a lot. No, no I like that's that. That's great. But I mean, we'll talk about the, we'll talk about the, 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 uh, the releases from 62 to 70. Right, the, 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 okay. the canon, basically. The canon. Exactly. I get a single album. Not, the reason White Album, because it was two, out, two records and more music. I don't know. I, I, it's, a, it's too tough a question. Part of me would say Abbey Road. A good part of me would say Abbey Road. And a good part of me would also say Rubber Soul and Revolver. And with now, if, and me and to it be, can change. It can change from year can, to year, too. It can. How can I not listen? I want to hold your hand and all my loving. <laughs> and, and don't mm. bother me. You know, I, but, you know, <laughs> it, it's, it's. I hope I don't ever have to choose one album. <laughs> but I do have one song. It's easy to pick a favorite song. People do that all the time. And what's that? Al, tell him what's my favorite song. <laughs> Come on, Al. You know me for 47 years, 46 years. I think I think it's Hey Jude. It is Hey Jude. Yes. Hmm. All right. Why, why is that not surprising, considering you end end every fest with that? Yeah. Um, so. But it just, to me, it was like an album. It really was. I listened to it. I've told the story before. I was a senior. In college, if I if the record was on, if the radio had a playing, which on ABC was seven minutes after the hour, every single hour around the clock, mm-hmm. number one song for nine weeks or something, and I'd be I wouldn't turn it off until the song I wouldn't go into my class if I uh, till the song ended. Mm-hmm. So I would just sit in the car. <laughs> <laughs> it was a. How did, how'd you like the one plus remix, uh, Mark? The one plus remix, I cried. The video, that one ver- the other version of it, the way they mm-hmm. fixed it up, I've never heard such a great performance of any song ever. Mm-hmm. Well, I, mean, I was talking about the audio, the audio with what Giles did with the audio on that. Um, well, the, but yeah, they, I mean, it was it was great to see the videos finally. Well, the I video mean, they they fixed up the audio on, on the on the video of it. Right. That, the the, unre- the version that hadn't been played before, but I mean, this the, the vocal performance of Paul was just. Was just off the wall, was just just off the charts. And then he, they did. You find that that they actually recorded the the live revolution the same day, right? Mm-hmm. Right. And and that that performance is, is off the is out of this planet. Mm-hmm. It's like unbelievable mm-hmm. those versions. And there it is on one single, <laughs> one forty five comes out in August of six of sixty eight and. It just to me it was like an album. It was like a whole album. It had so much in it, and every time I heard it, I heard different things and the screaming and the and the the build up of it. It's just a, it's like the top of the heap of all time to me. Even if it's only number two in the charts every year behind Stairway to Heaven, to me there the Hey Jude is, is the is the Mount Everest of music. Well put. I, w- I would kind of agree. That's my favorite Beatles song too. And it's real tough to pick what's the the best Beatles single because I know a lot of fans will probably vote for Penny Lane, Strawberry Fields Forever. But Hey yeah. Jude and Revolution, Hey Jude and Revolution, I tell you, it's, it's either one or two. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, Penny, Strawberry be. Fields was my, was my favorite Beatles song for at least six months, eight months. Mm-hmm. Then, then the, the B-side of our next single, a few down the road, uh, the B-side of Hello Goodbye. Whoa, what is this? Yeah. I think it would be harder to say what is their worst single than what is their worst 
you know, track, an album track, because the singles were uniformly incredible. You know, exactly. if you look yeah. at any of them, I mean, you know, we're focusing on the late ones with Strawberry Fields and Hey Jude and Revolution. But I mean, you go all the way back. I mean, I want to hold your hand and either this boy or, or I saw her standing there, whichever one you want. I mean, that's an incredible single for me to you. Thank you, girls. An incredible single. You know, they're they're all just really perfect. She loves you. I'll get you. Really. Yeah. Don't drop out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right. And don't stay outside class listening to songs when you should be going in. <laughs> uh, there's one other thing that amazes me in terms of timing, which was in, I guess it was probably, I'm sure it was in um, re the Recessions book, but it didn't really stick to me until recently, a couple of years ago. Help, I mean, uh, yesterday, and I'm down. Mm -hmm. Paul's greatest melody greatest song and paul's greatest rock and roll song he recorded the same day yeah How does that actually true? actually that was i've just seen a face with yeah. i'm down and and um and yesterday oh that third song okay yeah that wasn't too shabby either yeah. but I mean, <laughs> today recorded by more people than any other song ever and i'm down a, was only a b-side of a single it wasn't even an a-side and think about how different Paul's vocals were going from yesterday, time down. Right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and the same day. The mm -hmm. same, you do three songs in a day, and then it just, it just, it's mind boggling. Mm -hmm. So, but right. he's Paul McCartney. Mm -hmm. And he did it, and he did with Hey Jude and, and Revolution on the live versions. And we get to hear them now cleaned up. And it's just, it's just, that was the best track on, on the new uh, Beatles one. Now, given as Ken constantly reminds us that there are forty, there's forty six years of solo releases of post Beatles mm -hmm. releases, <laughs> um, of that massive amount of uh, of material, what would be the what would be the the one album that you would take to a desert island? The ones one, al one album of each Beatle, of course. Don't make me pick one of just one. <laughs> mm, okay. <clears throat> um, I have a theory about this. I'll tell you that in a second, buddy. Here's a theory. Again, I was talking to Tom over lunch a few weeks ago. Right. Tom works around the corner from me in Jersey. Right. Uh, and we miss you, Al, at our luncheons that we. I uh, I miss I miss having them. So he you know he in the in the fall he was saying making a case that um, Tug of War was Paul's best solo album. We know he he feels that oh, way. Oh yes, As he, he's, he, he has makes expressed it. about it. Now mm. it's very legitimate. But here's sure. a theory. Here's a theory. He's a youngster. He's ten years old, at least ten years younger than all of us. No, but Ken, you may be in the <laughs> no, 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 no. He's in <laughs> no. he's Stupid in Ken's Ken's oh, neighborhood. He's, yeah, he's, he's was. Yes. So I think I think Tom is like two or three years younger than me. Okay, so okay. you guys are in the same age bracket, but uh, Alan, I'm assuming you're closer to age to me and Al, and Al. Mm -hmm. some. Yep. Okay. So our prime when we were, you know, late teens and early twenties, that happened in the late in the mid sixties, late sixties, and early seventies. So as when eighty two comes around, we were already adults, quote mm -hmm. unquote. So the music that we got as in that age bracket, so like like eighty seventy and seventy one and seventy two, like the greatest albums I was trying to pick my favorite albums of all time. And they're all in there. You know, obviously every Beatles album, but you know, J James Taylor and Cat Stevens and Elton John's first album, uh, Neil Young. They're like all at the same time frame, because mm -hmm. that. And not that I don't love the albums any less, but I I don't think I can name the, half the songs I'm pressed to play. I can't remember the last time I heard it. Uh oh, I'm, I can I, name all of them right now. <laughs> right, I know, but I'm saying backwards. Just too much, there's too much music out there that 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 and my brain in 1986, approaching 40, is not the same brain that listened to music at 72 and 71, where the time was where I could just put a record on and listen to it for 10 days at a time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, but, this is a conversation I like having with a lot of people, but it just goes along with this theory that I have. And I'm sure some listeners might disagree with this, but I personally think that the music that you hear when you're a kid, teenagers and 20s, 
is the music that no matter what will have the greatest impact on your life. That's and what I, think kind, that. I agree with yeah. you. That's exactly. You know, yeah, but, but what if it's wonderful like, Christmas time? Uh, <laughs> we have we have this big this big disagreement here with Wonderful Christmas Time here, Mark, which what I about- think is a great a great Christmas song. What do you think? Mark? And the other three don't feel that way. I love it. Hmm. I love that song. It's really cute. Okay, that's two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But again, I, I love just about every song they've recorded, pretty much. I mean, I love the solo albums. Again, not as much of the albums. I mean, people still, you ask me my favorite albums, solo. Mm-hmm. Right. It's got to be All Things Must Pass, even though even though Living in the Material World was really close second to me. And the last, the Brainwashed album is just a class, it's just a, it's a gem of an album. Mm-hmm. You know, take out 20, 33 and a third, which was fabulous. But I'm just saying that, at in my fifties when I when I came out, it was a, it's an amazing album. Maybe it was maybe it was because it was the last album, but the music on that is just incredible. So George had it right till the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, solo, uh, John, I'd have to go with Imagine because my favorite, pretty much my favorite song of John's, is not Imagine. Although it's it's overall it's a, my favorite song of John's with a with that message. But give me some truth. I think is a better song for mm-hmm. me. I just, mm-hmm. I just the fact that George is on it. And isn't Ringo on it too, playing drums? And the three of them? No, that, no. Is, which song? Ringo, is three of them. No, on? None of them are. There's no three of them on on Imagine. It was only John and George. Uh, the only other Beatle on there is George on the Imagine album, and Ringo was uh, on uh, Plastic Ono Band album. Yeah. So there wasn't. I thought there was one track that three of them were on it. I'm the greatest. Well, I mean, of John's. I thought that, no, I thought, no, I thought, there was never one with three. Okay, I, I bow to your. I'm surprised, <laughs> you know that, but I just, I've just always thought that. But yeah, give me some truth to me. It's also a very strong message. It just I didn't get out there like imagined it, but it's just a, an amazing song. I just love it. Paul, my favorite Paul's album. Boy, is that tough. That is really, 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 really tough. And it comes down to Ram. Probably because it came out when I was 23. It's just a great at cover to cover. There's not a, a throwaway there. It's just great album. Band on the Run is terrific. Venus and Mars, I love. I think it's a fabulous album. And I, I do like, I do love uh, Tug of War. I think that's a good one. And I think in his later years, every other album is really fantastic. Chaos and Creation, Fl- Flowers mm. and Dirt first, and Chaos and Creation later on. And, uh, in between was um, Flaming, Flaming Pie. Flaming Pie. Yeah. yeah, all great albums. Flowers in the Dirt. Yeah, flower, I said Flowers in the Dirt, and then Flaming Pie, so you mm. skip, uh, skip uh, off the ground. Again, by anybody's, anybody else's comparison, it's a great album, but it's just not doesn't have the, the consistency of the other albums that I just mentioned. Mm-hmm. And I still listen to them quite regularly. But, Ken, but uh, Tom makes a good case. Because Wanderlust, Wanderlust is really a classic song. You know? It's really a mm. great, great song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I like hearing. I like hearing what a lot of fans have to say, especially when I talk to them about the solo stuff. Because when it comes to Paul's, they usually tend to after the seventies, they'll pick Tug of War, Flowers in the Dirt, Flaming Pie, the ones you mentioned, Chaos and Creation in the Backyard. Those are the ones they tend to highlight the most. Because I think so, they're better uh, albums. I think they, there's a reason for it. They just have is it, when Paul recorded those, he was just in a a, a better mood and came out with uh, you know better songs. You can't hit a home run every time. Even Paul misses a few, mm-hmm. occasionally, rare occasionally. But in Ringo, <laughs> it's between the Ringo album and Ringo Rama. Ringo Rama is a great album. Thank you, Mark. Oh, wow, <laughs> very uh, interesting. How you pick Ringo Rama there? I mean, a lot of the stuff that he did said, with Mark I, Hudson was great. No, I said the 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 Ringo album, the '73 yeah. album. Right, and, sure. And, and Ringo Rama. Those were the those I think were the two <laughs> best. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was mentioning. It's just oh. interesting that you mentioned Ringo Rama in addition to Ringo, because I, I love that album too. Yeah. yeah, I should. I haven't listened to it in a while. I gotta put that. I gotta. I gotta put the music on my my computer in the office. So I can listen to it. I I'm really lax at that. Mm-hmm. I have like fifty instead of a thousand. <laughs> I have all these CDs at home and just don't I don't do all that that I should 
Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, when you mentioned you mentioned how much you you love Ram, if I'm remembering cor- correctly, and you know it's been a long time, didn't you uh, didn't you attend a session for Ram, at least an overdub session that was held in New York? No. no. You didn't. Okay. No. I would have loved to, but. We've since met people and had people as guests who were there, like Danny Sywell. Sure. Former Wings member. No, I wasn't at a session there, no. Ah, I, okay. I think I was at a set. We were doing mixing, I guess, of something. And the Beach Boys and all the Saturday Night Live crew, the original members, popped in. I remember Carl Wilson was there and, and Mike Love and Belushi, Gilda. I don't know what it was. It was, it was late at night on forty. 40- 8th Avenue and 44th Street, one of those mm-hmm. places, one of those studios. Mm-hmm. Uh, were what? there, and it was... It was uh, what, year, oh, what year was that? Oh, uh, I got to guess, uh, late 70s? Late 70s, yeah. Well, wow. it, couldn't have been, it had to be before 82, you know, by 82, but I, I, it was late 70s. I can't remember, when I, write, when I do finally write my book... <clears throat> <laughs> who laughed harder who was that <laughs> who gave me that laugh I, th- I think that was Al I'm, I'm going to say that I was Al names. I want names yeah. <laughs> yes I've been th- I, well, I you- started writing this 20 years ago and I got like four pages done but it will be done uh, hopefully no I don't remember what we were there for we were doing we were looking at something it couldn't have been Welcome to Pepper Land because that was 74 mm-hmm. but I, d- I don't remember but I, here's a story. I, I remember this one when I lived in River Edge. So it was 70, this was 78. Mm-hmm. I get a message. I wish I would have saved it. Hi, this is Eric Idle from Ruddlefest calling, <laughs> calling to invite you to a private screening of a new TV show coming out. It was in <laughs> Times Square, and we get to this room to watch All You Need Is Cash. <laughs> it was me and Carol and Eric Idle. And Derek Taylor and one or two other people, and that was it. Wow. Wow. It was amazing. And after it was over, Derek Taylor said to Eric, Why don't you look out the window? Because the window you could see actual Times Square where the ball comes down, and there was a big screen there. And at that very moment, the ruddles are coming, the ruddles are coming. And Eric went nuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a nice thing, watching that, watching it on, it was just on a TV, it was a little, a little room, it was a tiny little screening room. And, mm. and uh, Derek arranged all that, which was... Did you talk much to Eric Idle? Sure, we well, were not doing the movie, but yeah, we were talking before and afterwards, absolutely. Mm. I wish he would have come down as a guest, we could still have him as a guest. But, oh, you know, he would be fantastic. I yeah. know. But we, yeah, we've had the Ruddles reunion without him, but That's he wasn't right. any, he wasn't part of the musical part of it. Mm-hmm. So we've had Eric, we've had Neil, who was one of my favorite guests. Neil Neil Linus was always a wonderful guest, with great stories. Now, when you think about not only the Ruddles but how close Eric was to George Harrison, and the stories yeah. that he could tell, geez, <laughs> he'd yeah. be an amazing well, guest. Well, right, but so so was Neil Innes. He had stories. Yeah, he was the sure. baby in the uh, Cracker Box Palace, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. The war. So, questions? Any other questions? Yeah. Well, you recently um, did a blog post uh, shortly after the passing of George Martin, and yeah. maybe you can give us a little, like a capsule version of that. Your your thoughts on on George Martin. I forgot what I wrote, but I did, it just came right out of me. Sometimes I do that. I don't mm-hmm. think. Yeah, you know, he really, he was so, he was very special. And that one meeting I had with him, it was an arranged meeting at a hotel room in L.A. And so it had to be in the early 80s. And well, it's just a charming man. He was just so sweet. And, you know, it was at least 30 or 45 minutes. And we talked about a lot of things. And the last thing I, I asked him, I said, can I ask you? A trivia question. He said, okay. I, was, I said, can I ask you one trivia question? He said, yes. Well, I asked him about the penny lane, the horn at the end. Ah, uh, yes. And he said, Capital One of the record. We didn't want to give it to him. We gave it to him. We sent it to them. And then I guess we must have finished it and sent them a different one. 
We we didn't know. He he he's like he had almost didn't really know. I can't believe he wouldn't have known, being such a perfectionist. But it was like no one had mentioned to him at all. It was only fifteen years from sixty seven to eighty two. It wasn't like forty years later. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was just it was just the uh, you know, here's that great mystery. How did the how did the test pressings have it? The samples. How did it the ones that got out to the radio stations? How did they get it without with the with the horn and why it wasn't on the on the final version? I don't know. Mm-hmm. It just, just we just did it. <laughs> it did it was it's like part of Beatle lore, but it, it, to him it was just all right, on to the next we're doing we're doing an album, we're doing a big album here. Leave me alone. Let me concentrate on this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. I, I guess of the of the inner circle, I guess George uh, George Martin and Neil Aspinall, I guess, are probably the only ones that you've never had as a guest at the fest. You're right. You're right. I yeah. Well, and and I feel so so lucky. To, I've met every single person involved with the Beatles story except Brian. Right. It's, it, I, it just you know it's like and the and i get as a fan i get i'm very excited to meet all them and, and i think you know i'm guessing after after neil was uh left apple we'll say he was going to write a book mm-hmm. so i'm sure had he lived he would have been a guest because he wasn't so shy derek taylor wasn't a guest although we did a uh an hour exclusive interview uh, in uh, 76 well 80 87 87 right 87 philadelphia right um, but he I mean, we got we got to, had nice long conversations in 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 england a couple of times we really had good conversations it was thrilling wow i just want to ask a couple of questions here did you ever try to get george martin for the fest yes and i'm sure it was kind of difficult well obviously it was impossible didn't happen. <laughs> I asked him at that meeting. I invited him. He said maybe for the fiftieth. That's what he said. So I, okay. I got. I, he, but he didn't come. He didn't. You know, he was. He, I was losing his hearing, so he wasn't doing that much public appearing. And you know, I don't know. Yeah, we, I really wish I could have gotten him as a guest. He's the one guest that I really would have liked to gotten have gotten. But it just wasn't his thing. You know, he's a different kind of uh comes from a different world and you know the worlds collided and and he just didn't feel like you know he did his own shows for a while which i went to so right. a couple of times got to see him again mm-hmm. a few times to meet him again but you know i guess i'm sitting standing in front of an audience of of beatles fans when he was still doing current recordings is not uh, what he wanted to do yeah so I was going to ask you of all the people that you wished had been at the fest, besides the obvious four, who would it have been? So, yeah, that certainly George Martin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we've had almost everybody else, pretty much. Right, right, yeah. right. Because I, th- I think a lot of people don't remember because it was only the second Beatle Fest, but right. you had Mal Evans. We had Mal Evans. I was trying to think of how I got him. I remember, mm. the only thing I remember him, meeting him in a hotel room in New York City, set up by some girl who knew him, can't remember who she was at all, but she contacted me and said, you want to have Mal Evans? Mal Evans paid me the biggest compliment I ever had in my entire life. Mal, I've told you this a hundred times. Mm-hmm. He was, nobody knew him. You, know, this, you had to be a hardcore fan to know the name, but nobody knew him. Nobody ever got to, to see him. Sure. He was just in the background. He was a loyal Beatle person. And he was lines lining up all around the building for him to autograph and people thanking him for coming. I was watching Magic Mystery Tour with him. And he's sitting there telling me all the things that were going on behind the scenes while I'm watching the movie. I wish I would have taped that conversation because I only remember a few. But at the end of the weekend, he said, Mark, I thank you for having me here. This was the greatest weekend of my life. And when mm-hmm. I think that how many weekends of mine I would have traded for one of his, mm-hmm. it was just a it was just a, a great moment. And I spoke to him in late December of seventy of, of, uh, five, and he was writing the book. He said, "I'm almost finished with it, and I want to do your shows. I just love what you're doing. I want to be part of it." And obviously, a few, day, a few yeah. weeks later, 
Yeah. But he was, he, he just had a, he just loved it. He just, you know, he, he was never the center of attention. And here he was talking about the boys he loved the most. Mm. Hmm. What do you remember most about when you had Billy Preston there? The last time we had Billy was also one of the top three or four moments in Fest history. He was sick. He was very sick. He was wow. dying. Mm-hmm. Right. Was it 2005? He was I a, think 2005, yeah, because he passed the next year. Right. And I went up to see him in his room about an hour before he was supposed to go on. He's still in bed. Uh, his uh, Joyce, his agent, was taking care of him. And he comes downstairs. He gets to the back of the stage sitting. He was, doing, he was going to do a show with his band, uh, an afternoon concert. And mm-hmm. he's sitting next to my brother-in-law, Paul, who's a doctor. And Paul told me later that he looked like he was really dying. He could hardly get up the three steps when they introduced him. But they introduced him, and he got up to the third step. He leapt on the stage, you know, hustled over to the piano, sat down, and played for 40 minutes. And the place was speechless. Mm -hmm. The whole audience was cheering and screaming like I've never seen before at any fest. And Cal and I walked him, because he really wasn't strong enough to walk on his own, but he was drained after that. We're walking, he's holding on to both of us, and fans are coming up to him. He was going over to the, we're taking to the, to the table, he was going to sign autographs. Mm-hmm. And people coming up to him said, Billy, that was the most amazing thing you ever saw. And they, I mean, they were just falling at his feet. It was mm-hmm. like, incredible. I never saw anybody say that at the fest. I mean, it was just something in... In that moment, a spark that lifted him from being close to death to doing that performance. And the next day, he collapsed in the lobby. And one of our, one of our attendees was a, is a, a practitioner or something, or an EMT. Mm-hmm. He, that's mm-hmm. what, he had failing kidneys. He could have died right there in the, on the, on the lobby. They took him to the, to the uh, hospital you know, half a mile away, and they put him on dialysis, and he, that's what he died of. He, he, eventually, of uh, yeah, he never got a kidney. Now, I, I, Mark, I remember him playing in Los Angeles, and that must have been a couple of years before that because he was fantastic, and yes. he didn't show any signs of being ill at that show. As a matter well, of fact, well, somewhere in my archives, I have a picture of me standing next to him in the elevator because we <laughs> have to be on the same elevator and i and i got him i believe it or not i got him to sign a copy of get back the bootleg Ooh. <laughs> oh. oh not the single you couldn't bring the single with you oh no no i have this is the cd this is the the, the beatles <laughs> this is the uh the uh, almost let it be album right. that he signed and uh but uh i remember that show not long before he passed away i saw billy preston in concert at uh, Mohegan Sun, because he was part of one of Bowser's shows, and um, you know, I saw him after the show, and and he looked uh, kind of tired, and um, you know, it might have been the last show he ever did. It certainly yeah, is one was, of the last. So he did he did a bunch of shows. I don't know if he was headlining the shows, but he did shows because I guess he was contracted for them. Mm. Did you how many? Did you did you see Ringo's first tour? We we had to go to Atlantic City to see him. Mm-hmm. Outside? Yep. Yep. I was there. And <laughs> Billy, he's, he's, he's on the left side of the stage playing p- playing the organ, and he sees me and Carol. He, I was in the middle of the concert. Hey, he waves to us. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> that was very exciting. He was tremendous. when he, I mean, the, the show that I saw in Los Angeles, he played with Liverpool, and he was just absolutely awesome. He, he was. really was. When and, he was good, he was very, very good. Let's put it that way. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he was he was a child prodigy. You know, yeah, yeah died, they showed that piece of the film with with Ray Charles, right? Mm-hmm. But with right. Uh, Bob Hope, and that was that was uh, Nat, uh, Nat, Nat King Cole. Nat King, Nat King, Nat King yeah. Cole, right. Right. the, the and, WC Handy story. Yeah, it Mark. Was a, yes. When I when I saw I saw a concert for Bangladesh at a press screening in San Francisco at, the, at this I can't remember which theater it was but it was a big theater in San Francisco and it was, and it was a it was a advanced screening because the Jefferson airplane were there and there were a lot of people there and I swear to God after he did that's the way God planned it the whole place erupted there was there, I mean 
he got the best applause of anybody for that. And that, that was, uh, you know, that's, I will never forget that. That was amazing. Oh, at, at the show itself. I was there. Yeah. Oh, ah, okay. Got, it was amazing. It was, mm-hmm. a, I, I thought that he, that, uh, when, when Dylan came out, Dylan got a, a much as of applause, but it wasn't, the crowd wasn't riled up already. He just walked out. Mm-hmm. That's when George walked out. People went nuts too, but musically, he was a non, non Beatle song. Billy Preston was it. And then, uh, Leon Russell broke the place up also. Yeah. Alan, you were there too, right? Yep. Sure was. Oh, Did you have a seat in the first twenty six in the first twenty six rows? Nope, <laughs> nowhere Alan, near. Uh, and Alan, I went to the evening show. I was at the afternoon show, so I got to see the. Um, uh, what's I forgot the name of the song that he did. See, he, hear, he did hear me, hear, Lord. Hear me in the first show. Me, yes, right. He didn't do it in the second one, mm-hmm. and I don't know why they didn't put it out when they yeah. did the uh, the set. I was disappointed, and I was looking forward to that. Yeah, but I, Alan Klein bought the first 26 rows out ah. completely. I sat in the second row nice. after that. Oh, second oh, wow. Row. And yeah. I had to take the red eye the night before because I was on vacation for three weeks with my, with my friend in, in California, and right. I, I flew back from San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Wow. Steve, to, mm-hmm. to get the, my friend on the East Coast had bought me a ticket. So I went right there in the afternoon concert. And I remember walking out of that concert. It was teeming rain. And it, nobody knew it. Nobody, it, it, was, it made no difference to anybody walking. It was like, we got to get out of this rain. It was, we were so high on that, on that show we had just seen that nothing could, no, uh, even buckets of rain, a uh, Dylan's horn. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Couldn't, uh, couldn't uh, dry us up. It was, just, uh, it was just an amazing show. And I've always said that was the greatest concert I've ever seen until... Paul played Yankee Stadium. Hmm. And, oh, that's a few years ago. Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe because we all, all four of us went together seeing, I mean, we, the girls have seen Paul with us a number of times, but maybe that's something to do with Yankee Stadium, me being a, a Yankee fan since 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 the cradle, born oh. in the Bronx. Oh, right. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's the, it's the place. But it was just, it was just really exciting and, and it shows that the you know who does a show like Paul McCartney? Nobody. There's nobody could do that. There's not even a close second out there, and yet he keeps going. Like it's yeah. it's, it's it's incredible. It's uplifting to 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 be around in this time when he's still doing this. It's just wonderful. So I really I it was the concert for Bangladesh lasted almost forty years in my mind. It's the greatest one. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, it was it was so memorable. Hmm. All righty. Well, this has been uh, this has been fabulous. Th- this happened the last time you were here. It's the same thing. We figured eh, you might be on for a half hour or so, and then we'd have to fill it up with other stuff. And uh, no, and and no we in the Beatle world, <laughs> really. And and uh, <laughs> well, and I think we, we barely we barely scratched the surface of uh, not only your memories but also uh, what's going to be at the fest and and all. When you get five Beatle nerds together on a talking, it just <laughs> how can you stop? You know, you can do this all, all forever. Yeah, this so, is very we, true. So, for those of you who maybe not have been to a fest, yes, come on down. You'll have the greatest time. We have talks, we have lectures. Alda heads them, Ken heads them. It's just the, the authors who have these new stories and come up with new information, and you could talk about little topics. And we have this. New thing the girls thought of called the Fabratory that you can dissect a specific song for a half hour or, or it's just new stuff and it's just a, a lot of enjoyable Beatles stuff all weekend long and you get away from the rest of the world and it's like, that's why people come. It's like family. As Ken Dashow said, it's like Thanksgiving without the arguments. Yep. <laughs> and, the, the, and the dates are? The dates are April 15th Tax Day, April 16th mm-hmm. and April 17th, at the Hilton Westchester Hotel. If you want to get rooms coming from out of, out of state, uh, sorry, it's sold out, but we do have an overflow hotel. You can go to thefest.com and look up all the information, all, all the details about the show. The tickets are on sale now. 
and it's free parking. It's easy to get to from Manhattan to New York City. You take the Grand Central Station, Metro North Line to Rye, Rybrook Hotel picks you up for free there, and you're there in 40 minutes. It's really very close. All my Jersey friends who think that the Hudson River is really the Pacific Ocean, it's only 12 <laughs> minutes from the Tappan Zee Bridge. It's not that far, folks. I live in New Jersey. It's it's closer to me than the Hilton in Meadowlands yeah. was by five minutes. So <laughs> right. for once a year, so take that trek over the bridge. You'll be happy. <laughs> Can I add one thing? Sure. Yes. Well, since Mark was just talking about the authors, so many of the people that have written books on the Beatles recently have been guests on our show here on mm -hmm. Things We Said Today. So if you've enjoyed the shows that we've done with people like Jude Sutherland Kessler and Kid O'Toole, and Anthony Robostelli. And Chuck uh, Gunderson. Can Chuck, Chuck Gunderson, uh, Candy Leonard. You know, mm -hmm. They're all guests at uh, the fest, so come cool. on down. Yes, come yeah. down. Thanks for the plug, Ken. Sure. And thank you, guys. And, uh, Thanks, it's Mark. It's been fun. Okay, Steve, good to, good to hear from you. It's good, good to see you two years ago. In yeah, person. Yes. Come back out to Los Angeles, I hope. <laughs> 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 we'll call you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Take care. Good night. All right. Good, Good night, Mark. Good Bye, Mark. guys. Yeah. Feel All better. Right. Thanks. But this has been uh, this has been a, a great conversation. And uh, before uh, before we go, Steve, want to give us our contact information? Uh, you can get you can get to us at uh, things we said today radio show at gmail dot com. We're also on Twitter, uh, Things We Said Fab. We're on Facebook. Uh, there's actually there's a group page and a radio station page. And you can also get to all of us through uh, our own individual Facebook pages. But uh, to, co to contact the group, if you want to send a comment, uh, a show comment, the best thing to do is send it to Things We Said Today Radio Show at gmail.com. And we will definitely look at it and talk about it and... And um, we do read them, and we do pay attention to them. So we would love to hear from you. And Ken, I'm sure you have some uh, some prizes uh, that you're going to be uh, giving out on your uh, on your website and through uh, every little thing. Well, on my website, every single week I have a trivia question or a Beatle game, which starts every Monday and ends every Sunday. And I have uh, a choice of one of nine prizes every single week. And it could range from everything from the Beatles 1 CD and DVD to the recent McCartney remasters for Tug of War and Pipes of Peace. And I also have now uh, the first Jude Sutherland Kessler book should have been there, which is a choice uh, of the nine prizes. So visit the website there for that and also special contests and interviews with uh, lots of people in the Beatle world, including the very same people that are part of this show. You could hear me interview them. <laughs> <laughs> that's a change of pace right there. So, uh, yeah, that's at KenMichaelsRadio.com. Okay. And, uh, Alan, anything uh, anything you need to um, let people know about? No, not particularly. Um, you know, there's always my book, The Beatles from the Cavern to the Rooftop, um, published by Fiden Press, uh, still available. Um, but otherwise, no. Not really. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I'll I'll just say that I I will be at the uh, uh, at the fest for of the New York area fest for Beatles fans, uh, along with uh, along with Ken. Mm -hmm. uh, in in fact, uh, as things stand uh, right now, on Sunday afternoon, we're going to have a little things we said today panel. Unfortunately, Steve and Alan can't be there, but so we're going to use uh, uh, our friends Tom Frangione and Darren DeVivo as sort of pinch hitters, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, so that should be that should be very interesting. Yeah. Can I uh, interject with one Please. little piece of news uh, that yeah. uh, happened today that you guys may not even be aware of? Apparently, Paul McCartney put out three hundred limited edition vinyl remixes of 1985 in the UK only they are now gone they are now been bought up one of the people who bought them up uh, not surprisingly was our friend uh, Bob Gannon uh, <laughs> but anyway um, 
there's a story about it online, and I'm going to actually be writing as soon as we get off the air about it. Uh, it looks like uh, something's in. It has probably something to do with the the weird little six second video that he posted online this morning. Did you guys see that? Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. take a look on the McCartney. Uh, you, oh, I wrote about it uh, this morning. Um, there's a six second McCartney video. It's a it's like a sound collage. And it uh, definitely sounds like an older song. It doesn't sound like 1985 to me, but uh, something's going on. McCartney's uh, up to something, and uh, I'm sure <laughs> we're about to we're going to be finding out. And it's probably uh, something to do with his uh, uh, older solo songs, which I know will make Mr. Uh, Michaels very, very happy. But uh, I, I, exactly what we don't know. So there you go. By the time hmm. this comes out, you probably all will know. But we will see. We will see. Presumably so. Absolutely. Maybe Absolutely. we'll do a whole show on the remix of 1985. <laughs> 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 stay, who knows? Stay, and be with us next week for, uh, we can't say who, but we may have a special guest with us next week, folks. Yes, I believe uh, if the creek don't rise and the 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 lords of uh, the lords of Skype are cooperating. Uh, we will have another another special guest who also will be involved with uh, with the fest for Beatles fans. Mm-hmm. But the uh, the clock has got us, so uh, so we need to wrap it up. So for uh, for Steve Marinucci and Alan Cozen and Ken Michaels, uh, this is Al Sussman, and thanks for listening. And we will see you next time.